Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning all of you. Today my subject insurance law, we will discuss lecture number 5 that is the insurable risk. I am Dr. Naresh Mahipal, Senior Assistant Professor from Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. In my previous lectures, we have discussed about the nature and functions of insurance. Thereafter, we discussed about the historical development of insurance law globally and in Indian context. Then we have discussed about the concept of insurance, what insurance is all about and in the next lecture we have discussed about the principles of insurance that is there are some general principles and uh, some specific or the contractual uh, principles. In today's topic that is lecture number 5, we will discuss about the insurable risk. What is insurable risk? and what it means, what are the characteristics of insurable risk, what is the scope of the risk and what are the elements of risk. One by one we will go into details of the insurable risk and first of all it is pertinent to mention about the insurance risk, what it is all about. So let us discuss about it, what is the meaning of insurable risk. We all anticipate Countless risk in our daily life. In life and business, there lies a plenty of risk. Risk is closely connected with loss. Every risk results in loss of one or other kind. There can be loss due to perils of sea, illness, health, death, fire, earthquake and so on. The risk can, cannot be eliminated but the loss can be. Insurance cannot arrest risk from taking place, but guarantees the payment of loss and thus protects the insured from sufferings. The type of risk is the base for ascertaining the premium rates. Any loss that any insurance policy can cover could be considered as insurable risk. This kind of financial risk is one that an insurance provider deems acceptable and is therefore qualified for coverage. A scenario where there is a high likelihood of loss or damage that is outside the insured party's control is referred to as insurable risk. The insurance company will only take measurable, predictable and managed risk. So in very simple language we can say that any insurance policy that covers the risks is called as insurable risk. But the insurance company calculate it in a predictable manner and in a measurable manner and it manages risk. Generally speaking, losses resulting from occurrence outside the insured's party control are covered by insurable risk. These occurrences include accidents, thefts, fires or natural calamities, as we have already discussed. Furthermore, certain risks might also be covered if they are brought about the insured party's conduct. Evaluating the risk attached to a certain occurrence or circumstance is another definition of an insurable risk. Typically, this evaluation takes into account elements including the possibility of a loss, the gravity of the loss and the coverage cost. Any insurance policy must include the requirement of being insured, certainty of loss, quantifiable risk, 
नॉन कैटास्ट्रोफिक नेचर रीजनेबल प्रीमियम कैलकुलेबल एक्सीडेंटल एंड बिग लॉस आर ए फ्यू करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ इंश्योरेबल रिस्क पेमेंट ऑफ प्रीमियम्स एंड इंश्योरेंस क्लेम्स आर सिग्निफिकेंटली इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय दीज वेरिएबल्स सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द इंश्योरेबल रिस्क करेक्टरिस्टिक बिकॉज यू नो द इंश्योरेंस क्लेम्स एंड द प्रीमियम दैट यू पे फॉर द इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी दीज आर इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय द वेरिएबल्स सच एज सर्टेंटी ऑफ लॉस क्वांटिफाइबल रिस्क नॉन कैटास्ट्रॉफिक नेचर reasonable premium calculable accidental and big loss so these are certain factors which will decide the payment of premium and the claims it is once again retrieved that contingency that insurance companies will pay for are known as insurable risks this indicates that certain risks are not covered by insurance companies an individual takes on several dangers in a single day however it is not feasible to pay premiums for those risks and file claims in the event of an emergency before accepting the insurability of any risk a number of prerequisites must be met a risk is considered uninsurable if the potential loss is so great that no insurance or the insurance company would be willing to cover it if a risk is unquantifiable extremely large certain or impossible to define it may not be considered insurable we can define it by saying that risk is that conforms to the norms and specifications of the insurance policy in such a way that the criteria for insurance is fulfilled is called as insurable risk so this is how we can define the insurable risk by uh, following these particular variables that what are calculable while defining the insurable risk now let us discuss about the difference between insurable and non insurable risks the primary distinction between risks that are insurable and those that are not in that form former are covered by insurance companies while the latter are not if a risk does not meet the criteria for being insured such as being merely large loss definite accidental and non catastrophic in nature it might becomes non insurable secondly the insurer may find non insurable risk to be too risky which is the rational because of this insurers attempt to to avoid covering such risk when the likelihood of occurrence is too great or the potential for large claim amounts but insurers attempt to cover greater risks by charging higher premiums and enforcing stricter guidelines when processing claims however some hazards are necessarily outside of their purview thirdly furthermore it is not feasible for insurers to cover every kind of risk that exists in the world after all many in the insurance industry view it as a business and work to minimize losses some example include risks associated with a pandemic politics reputation trade secrets etc so after discussing about what what is insurable and non insurable risks let us discuss something about the 
characteristics of risk risk which may be insured by insurance companies typically share seven common characteristics number 1 large number of similar exposure units since insurance operates through pooling resources the majority of insurance policies are provided for individual members of large classes allowing insurers to benefit from the law of uh, large numbers in which predicted loss are similar to the actual loss however all exposures will have particular differences which may lead to different premium rates second characteristic is definite loss the loss takes place at a non time in a non place and from a non cause the classic example is death of an insured person or on a life insurance policy other types of losses may only be definitive in theory occupational disease for instance may involve prolonged exposure to injurious conditions where no specific time place or cause is identifiable ideally the time place and cause of a loss should be clear enough that a reasonable person with sufficient information could objectively verify all three elements third characteristic of insurable risk is accidental loss the event that constitutes the trigger of a claim should be fortuitous or at least outside the control of the beneficiary of the insurance the loss should be pure in the sense that it results from an event for which there is only the opportunity for cause events that contain speculative elements such as ordinary business race or even purchasing a lottery ticket are generally not considered insurable fourth characteristic is large loss the size of the loss must be meaningful from the perspective of the insured insurance premiums need to cover both the expected cost of losses plus the cost of issuing and administering the policy adjusting losses and supplying the capital needed to reasonably assure that insurer will be able to pay claims for small losses these later costs may be several times the size of the expected cost of losses fifth characteristic is considered as affordable premium if the likelihood of an insured event is so high or the cost of the event so large that the resulting premium is large relative to the amount of protection offered it is not likely that the insurance will be purchased even or a offer further as the accounting profession 
formally recognizes in financial accounting standards the premium cannot be so large that there is not a reasonable chance of significant loss to the insurer sixth characteristic is calculable loss there are two elements that must be at least estimable if not formally calculable and these are the probability of loss and the attendant cost probability of loss is generally an empirical exercise while cost has more to do with the ability of a reasonable person in possession of a copy of the insurance policy and a proof of loss associated with a claim presented under that policy to make a reasonable definite and objective valuation of the amount seventh characteristic is limited risk of catastrophically large losses insurance losses are ideally independent and non catastrophic meaning that the losses do not happen at all at once and individual losses are not severe enough to bankrupt the insurer insurers may prefer to limit their exposure to a loss from a single event to some small portion of their capital base capital constraints insurers liability to sell earthquake insurance as well as wind insurance in hurricane zones so we can discuss that there are seven characteristics of insurable risk now coming to the scope of risk the insurance protects the person from a variety of risks which might be fall on him or his family on the happening of a specified event the event must involve some kind of financial loss to the insured or at least exposed to some adverse event that is called risk new varieties of events have been added during passage of time in modern times such as third party risk and liability insurance it is a device to transfer certain risks or measurable economic loss suffered by the contributors that would otherwise be borne by the contributor alone there are two main categories of risks pure and speculative uncertainty and a real chance of financial loss combined with no chance of financial gain characterize pure risks automobile collisions are a good illustration contrarily speculative risks such as gambling for example have nearly equal odds of making money or losing it therefore risks that are pure can be insured where are risks 
that a speculative cannot. In other words, we can say that risks which are determinable are insured, whereas risks which cannot be determined, which cannot be speculated, are not insured. Now, another question arises that what makes a risk insurable? As the post title mentions, an insurable risk is something insurance companies will pay for. Consider a covered risk for a concession made to the insurer. In exchange for the insurer agreeing to pay a claim, if you suffer a loss, you pay your yearly premium or maybe bi annually that has been agreed between the insurer and the insured person. Certain dangers such as those connected to building wear and tear or maintenance issues only cause harm over time. Usually, insurers don't pay for these weaknesses. A risk meet a handful of criteria to be insurable, including that the exposure must be number one, sufficient financial risk or expense that the business is prepared to pay a premium to hedge against it. Secondly, statistically predictable insurers have to project the frequency and severity of risk common. Thirdly, as many other policy holders are exposed to the same risk, the entire group of policy holders can bear the cost of real damages. Fourthly, unlikely to happen concurrently with other policy holders of a similar nature. Fifthly, arbitrarily and without the policy holders control. Sixthly, precisely specified, quantifiable and independent of the insured. And seventhly, financially viable for the policy holder, that is the risk cannot be so severe as to prevent the insurance company from ever covering it. So, these are very important to understand that what makes a risk insurable. Another questions that come to our mind is what makes a risk uninsurable? Companies cannot assign an insurer to take on all risk no matter what is industry. Additionally, insurance firms are unable to pay for every potential risk on the facility. Sometimes the exposure is too expensive, too easily manipulated or too difficult to access. These kinds of risks are referred to as uninsurable risks. Remember that insurance is rarely clear cut, numerous dangers 
that are considered uninsurable possesses numerous subtilities. Nonetheless, insurers refuse coverage when there is only a slight change in the circumstances that an expensive risk will materialize compared to the likelihood that it won't. The risk is evaluated only then the person is insured after charging the amount of share called consideration of premium. The risk can be evaluated by various methods. If more loss is expected, higher premium may be charged. The probability theory is used to evaluate the risk or we can say that the probability of loss is calculated before or at the time of insurance. The insurance serves a twofold purpose, the immediate or short range and the remote or long range. The immediate purpose is to solve by paying a definite sum or amount at damage or death of the insured. So now let us discuss some definitive principles to understand risk. There are seven fundamental principles that apply to insurance contracts that are pertinent to understand risk. Number one, utmost good faith. Number two, insurable interest. Number three, proximate cause. Number four, indemnity. Number five, subrogation. Number six, contribution. And lastly, loss minimization. Let us discuss all these seven fundamental principles that apply to insurance contracts one by one in detail. The very first one is the principle of utmost good faith. This is a very basic and primary principle of insurance contracts because the nature of the service is for the insurance company to provide a certain level of security and solidarity to the insured person's life and of course to his family members also. However, the insurance company must also watch out for anyone looking for a way to scam them into free money. So each party is expected to act in good faith towards each other. When I say each party, it is insurer and the insured person. If the insurance company provides you with falsified or misrepresented information, then they are liable in situations where this misrepresentation or falsification has caused you loss. So, this is very important characteristic, important principle 
of uh, utmost good faith that both parties should act in good faith to each other. Second one is the principle of insurable interest. Insurable interest just means that the subject matter of the contract must provide some financial gain by existing for the insured or policy holder and would lead to a financial loss if damaged, destroyed, stolen or lost. Next one is the principle of indemnity. The amount of compensation is in direct proportion with the incurred loss. The insurance company will pay up to the amount of the loss incurred or the insured amount agreed in the contract, whichever is less. For example, let us make it clear with one example that how much the company will pay you at the time of loss. For example, if your car is insured for rupees 10,000 but damages are only rupees 3,000, you get only rupees 3,000, not the full amount of rupees 10,000. Compensation is not paid when the incident that caused the loss does not happen during the time allotted in the contract or from the specified agreed upon causes of loss. And this you can also see in the principle of uh, proximate cause that you will be paid only during the contract period, not outside the scope of the contract period timings. Insurance contracts are created solely as a means to provide protection from unexpected events, not as a means to make a profit out of a loss that has been caused to the policy holder. Therefore, the insured is protected from losses by the principle of indemnity. So, we can mention it is that indemnity means you the company is undertaking to indemnify you in the event of loss that is covered by the contract. Next one is principle of contribution. The principle of contribution comes into play where there are two or more insurance on one risk. The aim of the contribution is to call upon the different insurers to distribute the actual amount of loss who are liable for the same risk under different policies in respect of the same subject matter. This type of specific risk insured under more than one policy is called as double insurance. It is applicable in all type of insurance policies whether it is contingency, life or indemnity insurance. Next principle is principle of subrogation. This principle can be a, a little confusing, but the examples should help make it clear. Subrogation is substituting one creditor for another. That is to say, one creditor means the insurer company 
is substituted for another means another insurance company representing the person responsible for the loss one company is substituting with the other company the insurance company can only benefit from subrogation by winning back the money it paid to its policy holder and the costs of acquiring this money anything paid extra from the third party is given to the policy holder next principle is the principle of proximate cause the loss of insured property can be caused by more than one incident even in succession to each other property may be insured against some but not all causes of loss when a property is not insured against all causes the nearest cause is to be found out if the proximate cause is one in which the property is insured against then the insurer must pay compensation if it is not a cause the property is insured against in that situation the insurer does not have to pay another principle is the principle of loss minimization what is that in an uncertain event it is the insured's responsibility to take all precautions to minimize the loss on the insured property insurance contracts should not be about getting free stuff every time if something bad happens therefore a little responsibility is bestowed upon the insured to take all possible measures to minimize the loss on the property this principle can be debatable so call a lawyer if you think you are being unfairly judged under this principle sometime there is a dispute about it that when a person has been insured why he should to take care but the contract of insurance requires some duties it cast upon some duties both on the insured and the insurers so it is basically a contract a contract of utmost good faith whereby it is duty of both the parties not only to disclose the facts it should be misrepresented but duty to take care of each other so it is duty of the insured that he should take all the precautionary measures so that the loss can be minimized this is called the principle of loss minimization after discussing these principles let us discuss about the elements of risk what constitutes risk various factors affect the calculation of premium against an event in short the physical events can be measured scientifically as in life insurance but some events cannot be ascertained accurately such as exact dates of occurrence of fire accidents floods droughts etc we cannot guess upon that the risk can be evaluated by various methods if more loss is expected higher will be the premium charged theory of probability is used to evaluate the risk
various variables are calculated to declare the premium amount and in that situation theory of probability is used. Now let us discuss those elements, those factors which are responsible for calculating the premium and to decide the insurance company to underwrite risk or to reject the policy or the claim etc. So there are certain elements of risk in life insurance, we will discuss it one by one that what are the elements of risk in life insurance and thereafter marine or the property insurance. So elements of risk in life insurance includes number one age factor. It is the most important factor which may affect the risk. Initially the minimum and maximum age limits were fixed to avoid adverse selection. But in modern times, the age barrier is crossed conditionally and the premium is based on age of the life to be assured. At the very initial beginning, persons who were more in age were not insured. But later on in modern period when there are so many companies competing and there is a welfare concept also about the elderly peoples, they are also covered under the insurance policies. But obviously I have told you before that more the risk more will be the premium, higher will be the premium in that situation. So obviously the elderly peoples are covered, old age persons are covered but the premium is high in that situation. Second element of risk in life insurance is physical condition. An insurer is very particular about the physical condition of the applicants such as height, weight, whether the person is overweight and underweight, eyesight, hearing, heart working, lungs, nervous systems etc. For this purpose insurance companies first of all get you medically check up before deciding whether the policy should be issued or rejected, whether the premium should be higher or in any case the policy should not be issued. These are certain physical conditions which will determine overall well-being of a person. The third element of risk is personal history and present habits. The history of a person helps in revealing the possibility of mortality. Going through the background, going through the family background, one can understand about this possibility of mortality. The past health records, your previous medical reports, examinations, any past injury, any illness in past or your past habits such as drugs or alcohols for how long you consumed it and when you consumed it last, previous refusal by any insurer on what grounds etc are very cautiously examined by the insurance company that what is your personal history and your present habits. Another important element of risk is your family history. The family history is also examined as it is significant to know the transmission of certain characteristics through heredity. 
a person's height, weight, heart capacity, lungs capacity, etc., more or less follows family characteristics. So, before issuing the policy, company through the proposal form or through the medical examinations, it wants to know that what is your hereditary conditions, what is the mortality rate, what is the disease past history. Through that, the company can make it sure, not always, but it can determine that it might happen with you. And in that situation, it helps the company to underwrite the risk or it may reject the policy, issuance of policy or it may charge higher premium from you or can keep you in other insurance policy. Fifth element of risk is occupation. That what is your occupation? What is your profession? What in what type of work cultures you lives? What is your health condition? Your health is directly proportional to the occupation. It is one of the most important factor which may affect the risk. The occupation of a person or we can say that the profession of a person or the business or trade of a person is very significant to affect the decision of the insurer whether to underwrite the policy or not, whether to issue any policy or not, whether to reject the policy and if not, if the policy is to be issued, what should be the premium. These all factors help the company to decide about what is your occupation and profession and what it will be impacted upon by the insurance policy. The persons working in hazardous establishments are more prone to diseases and accidents at all the times. See, there are two types of uh, occupations such as hazardous and non-hazardous. Hazardous occupations like you are working in a cement factory, you are working in some agriculture lands or fertilizers company where you are more accessible to chemicals or the dust or the fumes etc. You are more working in the hazardous establishments or even in the cement factory or even in the iron industry or even the spinning mills where the accident could happen and there could be a loss of life in such kind of establishment, then at that time the policy may change. Sixth element of risk is place of residence, your place of dwelling, where you live, in what condition you live. That all is very important to decide. The dusty or unventilated house, unhealthy or unsanitary environment, geographical location, climate, condition of dwelling place may affect the risk. This is again very important uh, factor to discuss because you know the dusty place or where the ventilation is not proper, it may cause some kind of diseases and it may lead to some accidents in comparison to those persons where the air quality is good and where the ventilation is properly provided in the dwelling house. Similarly, unhealthy conditions or where the sanitary conditions are poor, it may lead to some diseases. The places where there is unhealthy condition, where the properly sanitized is not there, the cases are there where the mortality rate is high in comparison to other places. Also, geographical locations matters a lot 
because a person living in a plain area is less susceptible to any accident in comparison to person living on the hilly region. Your climates, very cold place, very hot place or moderate, that will all depend upon the underwriters, that is the companies to calculate whether the policy should be issued or not to you. Another important element is race and nationality. The rate of mortality differs from race to race and nation to nation. We cannot compare the condition of an Asian country with African nations. The climate and lifestyle of a country affects the health of its countrymen. Here the government has nothing to do but it is your climate and the lifestyle, the poverty or the above below poverty line, these all certain things will decide the health of its countrymen. Similarly, certain geographical factors affect some countries such as countries near to the equator have higher mortality rate. In India, it is observed that persons belonging to higher strata of the society lives longer than the persons belonging to scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. The only reason is that about the upbringing because their eating habits, their lifestyle, their working conditions, the facilities that is provided to both the strata can be compared and we know that the downtrodden section of the society gets less nutrients, proteins and they work in many unfilthy conditions and in hazardous occupations. So, the peoples belonging to high strata of the society lives longer than the persons belonging to the downtrodden section of the society. So, these were certain elements present in the life insurance. There are certain elements of risk in property or fire insurance. Number one, construction of property. The nature of construction of a building is an important factor in calculating premium amount. A building made of wood is more prone to risk than that of a building made of bricks and cements. The fireproof building is sounder than that of a building without fireproof characteristics. Other factors which are important while collecting risks are height, area, etc. Second is usage of property. Another important factor which affects the risk considerably is the usage of the building proposed to be insured. There is direct relationship between building and its contents. Then about the location of property while considering the insurance of a property. A building situated in a congested locality involves higher degrees of exposure to risk. Now let us see what are the elements of risk in marine insurance. Number one, management of cargo vessel. The cargo vessels which are efficiently managed by its management such as taking due care in its upkeeping, appointing efficient officers and crew are required to pay lesser premium than that of managements which are negligent, indifferent towards cargo care or do not appoint efficient officers and crew members. Quality of the vessel, it also be taken into account while ensuring the risk. It is not so always that the premium is charged lesser for the new ones but it may depend upon its frequency of exposure to the sea. 
then about the construction class and nationality of the vessel insurers take into the account the quality of vessels it is very important to know that detailed descriptions of the vessels such as its owner goodwill structural plan materials used in construction strength adaptability to carry various items age and physical conditions to bear stress and strains natural hazards and topography is another important factors which affects the risk considerably in the route adaptability and condition of the vessel as the vessel during voyage is supposed to encounter with various natural calamities such as seasons storms submerged shoals shallow waters narrow channels ice currents tides and sea quakes etc so let us understand the limitation of coverage that it is not always easy to obtain coverage even when an insurer chooses to take on a particular risk there are restrictions on the amount that an insurer will pay out generally an insurer uses premiums exclusions and set dollar limits to offset their own risk of covering you remember that deductibles also apply in these particular complex situations for example if a claim exceeds your deductible the insurer will only pay it furthermore they won't reimburse the claim until your deductible has been paid which goes towards covering the loss nonetheless naturally a lot of businesses take advantage of their insurance policies by paying a larger premium which forces the insurer to either raise payouts limits or reduce deductibles so concludely we can say that the risks that are covered by insurance coverage are known as insurable risks these dangers are the most prevalent kind all risk related to investments property identity health and life are covered by insurance in the world of insurance risks are not all the same put differently certain weaknesses are simpler to anticipate and address but other resemble wild cards and are thus more difficult to guarantee against i hope that uh, i have made much thing clear about the insurable risk in this current chapter a very thanks to you for listening to me hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet we usually know william shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of english literature but we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature and here i am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize a long sections from macbeth or king lear or julius caesar uh before they can go and sit for their school and or college exams but i am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors tolstoy for instance considered the writings of shakespeare to be and i quote crude immoral vulgar and senseless george bernard shaw absolutely loathed shakespeare as he did homer but perhaps no other criticism about shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that shakespeare is a marvelous storyteller provided someone has told him the story earlier now this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true none of shakespeare's plays 
contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets.